Many people in life do not understand they are going out or they are coming in in whichever form and in whichever way. If you just turn to the immediate neighbor that you're seated next to, one of the things that they'll confirm to you, okay, let me not say immediate neighbor. Some of them could be aware of what purpose really means. But most of the people that are seated here, if at all in the whole world, according to research, is 95%, don't know their reason for existence. Praise God. What most people look out for is, have I eaten? Have I been able to pay my rent? Am I able to feed my children? Am I able to clothe myself comfortably? The rest is not important. Praise God. I want to communicate to you that you are not by chance. Praise God. You are not created by chance. There is a purpose and a reason as to why you exist. Praise God. Scientifically, it is understood that uh, during conception, that the battle between you and another child that was meant to come in your place is in million forms. In other words, the kind of sperms that are released during conception period is in millions of forms and only the winner makes it to the top praise god you can imagine among the millions of sperms that were released in the day that you were conceived you happened to be the one that won the battle and the rest died even twins it is only one sperm that breaks into two and then fertilizes two eggs we understand that biologically. Praise God. So, the battle of your existence is not only for living physically like we see. It is greater than that. It is bigger than that. God brought you into existence that you may accomplish something. Not just space. Not just for food. Not just for clothing and for shelter. As many of you, as many of us live. It is required and required, I, I mean, and recorded that 95% of the people in existence do not understand why they exist. In other words, they don't understand their purpose of living. So the servant of God signed me and sent me to handle that topic this week. And I'm, I mean, uh, today and in this month, and I'm certain without a shadow of a doubt that your eyes will open to the reason of your existence in Jesus' name. And why is it that many a times people don't realize or don't have the quest for seeking for their purpose for living? It's because they don't look themselves. And they look up to many other people and they think, I think uh, Reverend Akama is the one who has a purpose. For me, if he prays for me and I get a uh, daily bread, I'm okay. No, there is something if you have not discovered your purpose for living, and I'll give you the explanations or the descriptions of what purpose really means, there is something lacking somewhere. If your purpose is in the education sector and you have not been able to crack it, then there is that thing that you're supposed to accomplish that is missing in the education sector. Can I hear your amen? If it is in the water business that you are supposed to crack something in the water business and you have not yet discovered it, then something is missing in that department whereby God knew that sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so will fill that gap. Many people are waiting for you to discover your purpose so that they can ride on your purpose. Can I hear your Amen. By the time we are done in these four Sundays, these four Sundays, you will have discovered your purpose for living in the name of Jesus. Can I hear your amen? What is the importance then of discovering your purpose? We read from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 9. 
chapter 2 of first peter and verses 9 what does he say but ye are a chosen generation say amen. amen ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is how God views you. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that you should show yourself before God, the one that created you. I want you to realize and look deep within yourself, the way you are. Are you showing yourself forth? before God. Can men look at you and say, surely she's a chosen generation. Can they look at you and say, surely he's a holy nation. A royal priesthood. Why? Many a times people are covered in, people are swallowed in the reality of if I eat, if I pay rent, if I do my daily uh, things, I'm okay. The rest is for other people. Today I'm going to open your eyes to the reality of your bread. Your success is connected to your purpose. So if you haven't realized your purpose for living, then we can clearly say that you're still not experiencing your success. Can I hear your amen? We read again from the book of Jeremiah 29, 11. These are the anchor scriptures I'll be using. Jeremiah 29, verses 11. Jeremiah 29, verses 11. What does he say? He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That is KJV. We read from NLT. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Exactly what God thinks about you. When we read those scriptures, what comes into your mind? What comes into your understanding? What comes into your reality? What opens up for you? Scripture is meant for every one of God's children. And not a few. And not a chosen few. That is where many people miss it. Praise God. Hallelujah. The word of God that you read every day. That we read here in church. Is not only applicable to me and daddy. It is applicable also to your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He says. Uh, uh, For I know the plans. What plans? To give you a hope. And an expected future. Praise God. That is how God thinks about you. Now, what future can you discover if you already do not understand why God created you? Why you are in existence? I began by saying, you are not an accident. One million sperms gave up and let go for your success. That was the first battle that you won. So that means clearly that God has a reason for your existence. God has a reason as to why you came. From today I'm going to raise women and men who will change the course of their destiny in the name of Jesus. So what are some of the understandings that we get from purpose? In other words, what is purpose? Purpose is why you exist. When we talk about purpose, it is why do you exist? Number two, understanding of purpose is purpose is connected to the heart of why you are on earth and why Jesus died for you. Purpose is connected to the heart of why you are on earth and why Jesus died for you. What is purpose? Purpose defines your life 
in terms of what God thinks about you. Purpose defines your life as to how or in terms of what God thinks about you. When you learn to discover your purpose, you understand the terms of how God thinks about you. God does not just see you as a mere woman, does not just see you as a mere man, does not just see you as a mere girl or boy. We have seen him describe us in a 1 Peter 2 verse 9. He describes us as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We have seen it in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He says that he has plans for us, plans for good and not for evil to give us an expected future and a hope. Praise God. So the purpose that is wired within you, it shows and openly describes the terms of how God sees you. Number, is it number four? What is purpose? Purpose anchors your life in the character and call of God. Purpose anchors your life in the character and call of God. Many again also have the knowledge of only those that are called are the ones that have the microphone and are in church. In other words, pastors. In other words, women of God. Praise God. Prophets. Isn't that the mind that we have? That when you hear someone say, I'm called of God. Many of you, many of us have the understanding of the called are the only ones that are ministering on the altar. I've come to change that understanding and narrative that you can be called in the medical field. Can I hear your amen? amen. You can be called in the public health sector field. You can be called in the teacher sector field. I was uh, recording someone in one of the Royalty Divine Women show and one of the women I was doing uh, the program business for you. And I was talking to that woman as we were doing the recording. And she mentioned and said, she's uh, specialized in beauty. She mentioned and said that God specifically gave her an assignment in the beauty market. Unelewa, kupaka kucha cutex and the rest of the feet and, and, and whatever, the other beauty. Women can understand that better. And she said, Jesus gave her an assignment through the call. She's born again. And Jesus told her, as you beautify my girls, as you beautify my women, as you beautify my ladies, remember to tell them about me. Isn't that a call? So she was given an assignment directly. Anyone that you apply, you know, gel, anyone that you do nail tech, nail art, whatever it is that you do, make sure you tell them about me. So she's leaving her call in the beauty sector, changing lives and winning souls for Jesus there. So it's not only pastors, we that hold the mic, it's not only prophets that have a calling. You can have a calling when you realize your purpose. When you realize your purpose, you realize your calling. There are those that have a call in the music industry. There are those that have a call in, 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 in farming, in agriculture. What is your call? You realize your call. Can I hear your amen? As we venture on, I want to bring to your understanding that with the understanding now, what purpose really is, purpose is the reason for your existence. When God dropped you on earth, it is how he wired you. It is what he put in you to bring change for him. Praise God. To bring glory, to show forth his glory for him. So if you haven't discovered your purpose and you are not yet living your purpose, what does it mean? It means that you're still not forth shining your light. 
showing forth your glory. It means that there are people lacking somewhere because you have not discovered yourself yet. Purpose, in other words, is your wiring and everyone has it. What has happened is many have not discovered it. And I remember I said that the connection of your success in life, who doesn't want to be successful? Let me see by a show of hand. You just want a mediocre kind of life? You just want to uh, walk in Futsubishi and not Mitsubishi? Let me see. You just want to live in Madare kind of areas and not Karen. Karen is meant for other people. I'm certain not no one amongst us here at least. Everyone wants success. And your success is not coded to your husband. Your success is not coded to Reverend Akama. Your success is not coded to your boss. Remove that mindset. He is living his purpose. That is why he is successful. That is why he has you employed in his company. Your success is coded in you realizing who you are. It's coded in realizing your reason for existence. I will read again Jeremiah 29 verses 11. Don't be lazy in finding out. If it means taking days of fasting and prayer, and the course of this month, you are going to understand how to find out who you are, why you exist, your purpose. But many a times people get lazy. They say, I think I'm okay with this one. If you're okay with the way you're living, it means you're grounded with where you are in life. Success can never be anywhere near or in, vis in your vicinity. Can I hear your Amen. That shall not be someone's portion from today in the name of Jesus. There are questions I'd like you to ask yourself. Questions that govern life. Questions that govern the understanding and the cracking of your success. As we say, purpose is connected to success. And if you have to be successful, there are questions that you need to answer by yourself. And I'll take you through the questions this month again that you'll be able to do what? To answer them adequately. Number one question is, who am I? Number one question is, who am I? Now, that does not mean you tell me I am Rosmosiemi. That does not mean you tell me I am Joshua. Your name does not describe you. Your name does not say that is who you are. Who you are depicts your identity. Today we are going to look at that in depth. Number two question is, what, uh, where am I from? These are questions when you answer, when you're able to answer by yourself, will open a way for you understanding your purpose and you and attaining your success. So, where am I from? Where am I from? What was number one question? Who am I? Number two question is, where am I from? I know another person will say, I am from Vihiga County. Another one will say, I am from Cumberland. That is not where you are from. According to the word of God, and I'll show you right here, because it speaks of every sector of your life. Where are you from depicts your source. Can I hear your amen? amen. Depicts your source. Number three question is, why am I here? You will say, I'm in sound of abundance because I came for service. No, that is not the answer. Why are you in existence? Why am I on planet earth? Why am I living? Why am I whom I am? Number three question, it depicts your purpose. Why are you here? Why did God create you? 
Why did God bring you into existence? There is a reason. There is a reason. As much as it will look vague right now, as much as it would look out of vicinity, Yani, you are seeing nothing. You cannot understand why you are. There is a reason. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number four question is, what can I do? Easily, what can I do without stress? You enjoy doing it. What can I do? Is the number four question that depicts potential. What is your potential? Let me bring to your understanding again that what sister so and so can do is not exactly a photocopy of what the other person can do. That is why teachers have the understanding that when you're teaching one pupil or another student, the rate of understanding between a class of 48 students is not the same. Is it true, teacher June? Absolutely. Children grasp differently. Adults grasp differently. Couples grasp differently. Potentials are different. What can you be able to do without force? Without confusion? What can you be able to do so easily as you enjoy it? This is the reality. Many of you wake up every day, go to work, to jobs that you do not love. You wake up every day, go to offices, look at colleagues and bosses that you'd rather, in the next one second, if you can get one million, you would not be seen in that office. Why? Because you haven't realized who you are. You haven't realized where you're from. You haven't realized what am I to here to do? That is your purpose. And so, your potential is limited. Now, I'll give you an example as I gave women last time in the meeting that we had. Daddy can minister the whole Kesha and still continue and do a service until one. Have you seen that? Why? Because he has realized his potential. He has realized why he's on, on planet earth. Why he's here. Not in sound of a banners. Why he's on earth. And so he enjoys what he does. Some of us look at him on Sunday and we wonder, what kind of divine strength do you have? He ministers until when he steps on this altar midday or thereabout. Until three and he still has strength. He prays for over 50 people here. 40 something people. And he still can push it sits down and talks to people here and there, he leaves this place sometimes almost up to seven. While wewe, umechoka tukuka kwa kiti. Praise God. Why? It is because he has realized his potential, he is living his purpose, and he is energetic to do it. He is happy about it. Praise God. So what is your potential? What can you be able to do? At a point whereby you are enjoying, what can you be able to do? At a point whereby you are not even being pushed. Like most of us are pushed to go to their offices. Number five and the last question is, what, where, sorry, where am I going? Where am I going? Number one question is, who am I? Which depicts identity. Number two is, where am I from? Which depicts source. Number three, why am I here, which depicts purpose, whereby we are going to be concentrating on uh, this month. And number five, uh, and number four is, what can I do that depicts potential? And this is the reality about potential. If you are wrongly placed in an area that is not your purpose, one of the things that will be oppressed is your potential. You will not maximally give in that field. As opposed to the, uh, the, the opposite, which is the example I've given you for daddy. When you're living your purpose, your potential can be overstretched. Praise God. Remember again, 
your success in life, which every one of us wants to be successful, is tied hand in hand to your discovery, to the discovery of your purpose. And these questions that I've given you are questions that should be able to help you understand your purpose. Praise God. Number five question I said, where am I going? That one depicts destiny. Where are you going? You will see after this I'm going to a lunch date. You see after this I'm going to see my me. If you have to reach your potential and attain your, des your destiny, then you have to discover your purpose. Can I hear your amen? And so today, very sharply, in the next 10 minutes, we are going to discover or unravel who am I? Number one question. Who am I? Praise God. Very quickly, how you describe yourself or how you realize yourself as a child of God is in God. Praise God. Let no one ever lie to you and tell you that you're dumb when in Jinga. That you're slow. You're very slow. That you're, you're sickly. That you understanding is, is low. What does God say about you? That is what you should take. That is who you are. Can I hear your amen? Who God says Martha is, is what Martha should run with. Who God says Julie is, despite um, the atmosphere and everything in life pointing otherwise, pointing poverty, pointing lack, pointing want, pointing sickliness, pointing marital failure, God forbid, is not me. It may be what is happening now, but that is not me. Praise God. And as I'm speaking like this, I want you to look deep within yourself. What have you branded yourself? What have they branded you? From time in memorial in childhood, what were your parents saying you are? And other people that really cast people's destinies are teachers. They keep on comparing you and telling you, why are you so dumb? Teachers, if you're a teacher here, mark that those destinies are just about to pass through your hand. You should bless them. Praise God. Praise God. Can I hear a, big, a bigger amen? amen? Who you are is not described by your potential. It's not described by what people can see. It is described by who God says you are. Who are you in Christ? From the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, every other identity went with the waters. The old is gone. Behold the new ass. Praise God. So the new identity, for you to be able to attain your success goals, for you to be able to attain your purpose in life, should be described in God. In who God says you are. Can I hear your amen? amen? Can I hear your excited amen? amen? So today I'm going to help you answer question number one is, who am I? Praise God. The greatest advantage that the devil has against God's children is when they do not know who they are. Aneza kuchapa of your obvio na mawimbi and confuse you. Aneza kuchapa kidogo kidogo na confusion ya ugonjwa and confuse you. That's the greatest advantage that the devil has. Your ignorance or your lack of knowledge to who you are in Christ Jesus is an upper hand for the devil to use against your life. Say, that is not my case. That is not who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm hidden in Christ in God. Praise God. Praise God. That is the greatest disadvantage many children of God have. You sleep like this and the devil chokes you and you think, no, 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 no. I am done. 
You sleep like this and you wake up you had an evil dream written uh I, I was I was watching a, a certain uh a service of my father in the Lord demons are real true but they are under your feet Can I hear your amen? amen That testimony a lady was giving a testimony and said she woke up that day and the first thing she saw physically written on her hand sio na kalamu she could see it inside like inside the blood and veins was death Imagine she had been marked for death. Mpaka inaonekana. She read it. Praise God. So that was enough to be able to shake anyone. But what does the word of God say concerning you? With long life I have satisfied you. So when you do not understand who you are in God, anything and everything the devil does will shake you. Say not from me from today not for me from today praise god again the potential that god has wired inside of you cannot be brought to life if you have not discovered who you are in other words god cannot be able to use you or work with you to full potential to success if you have not discovered who you are He will only work with you limitlessly. I mean limitedly. He will only be able to work with you to the farthest your knowledge can be able to reach. So both ways, the devil can take advantage of your lack of knowledge of who you are in God, and also God cannot work with you maximally if you haven't rea- realized your potential in him by cracking your purpose. Can I hear your amen? amen? So I'm going to bring your way five things, five things in the Bible that are connected to your success, that are connected to your purpose, that speak on who God sees you are. Number one is um salvation. Number one is what does God say about you from the day you were born again? And we read from the book of John 1:12 to 13. These scriptures from now henceforth should give you a headway. You should walk with your chest front. You should walk with your shoulders lifted. It is not only about realizing your purpose, but also your purpose can be hindered. Can I hear your amen? Your purpose can be stalled. Your purpose can be challenged. But when you realize what God has in store for you through salvation from the day you were born again who am I what does God say about me from the day I gave my life to Jesus then it gives you a headway John chapter 1 12 and 13 Somebody say amen Somebody say a bigger amen. 12 he says um But as many as received him to him he gave weakness. To him he gave weakness. What does your bible say? But as many as received him. When did you receive Jesus Christ? He gave you power. Let's continue on. to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name and LT says but to all who believed in him and accepted him he gave the right to become children of God hallelujah so why are you still experiencing defeat why are you still experiencing no success one could be you have not discovered your purpose and you have not discovered the power that you have been given by salvation praise god when demons attack you before you come to papa you attack them true daddy is a higher grace daddy can be able to confront them higher but when demons attack you you are, let them know that you know who you are in christ 
Let them know that power was bestowed inside of you when you gave your life to Jesus. Can I hear your amen? And so no demon should be able to uh, be walking around, monkeying around your territory. From today, receive power in the name of Jesus. Receive power in the name of Jesus. Verses 13 says, uh, with NLT says, they are reborn. In other words, what your mother did was good. But after salvation, you were reborn. After salvation, after giving your life to Jesus, you were reborn. Not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan. But a birth that comes from God. Can I hear your amen? amen. Say, I have power over demons and principalities. I will achieve my purpose. I am reborn. I am reborn. That should be your attitude. When confusion, when lack, when sickness, when demonic attacks comes your way, you say, Satan, I rebuke you. I have power. I cannot be sick. Before you call daddy, before you come for prayer on Tuesday, the only thing that daddy comes to do, ni kushindilia tu. Praise God. Number two, who am I? Realization in connection to your purpose is redemption. Now this is what I love. You were born again, then redeemed. In other words, double seal. Hallelujah. Are you excited with the word of God? When you learn to read the word of God and digest what it says, it should awaken like a certain joy. Redemption. I read from the book of 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. These scriptures are powerful. I want you to meditate on them in the course of this week and this month. 1 Peter chapter 1, 18. Hallelujah. 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 18 and 19. He says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. See, I'm not redeemed with corruptible things. As silver and gold. From your... I'm reading the Bible now. Unless you want to read with me, we go. Can we go? Okay. First Peter 1, 18. Let's go. 1, 2. For as much as you know with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. 19. But with precious that is what redeemed you. You are not bought by silver and gold. You are not being bought by money. You have not been bought by corruptible things of the world. In other words, things that can rot. Things that can end. Things that can disappear. You are redeemed with the blood of Jesus Christ. That is your redemption power. That is what you stand on and stand in. Praise God. When you realize that, then success should not be compromised in your life. Can I hear your amen? Very quickly we read uh, Galatians 3 and verse 13. I have so many scriptures on salvation and everything I'm giving you. I only picked the best. Galatians 3. We should be rounding up the service. I've just seen the prophet of God working in. Hallelujah. Can we appreciate him in absentia? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Allow me not to read the other one. I know my time is up. Hallelujah. Who am I in capacity. We read from the book of Genesis 1 and verses 28. Uh, for redemption, read Galatians 3 uh, 13 and Romans 5 and verses 10 in your own time. Is that okay? Okay. So we read capacity. Who are you? Connection to your purpose. Who are you in capacity? Genesis chapter 1 and verses 28. I love this. I love, love this. This one I must read. What does it say? It says, And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Where is your amen? amen. And replenish the earth. Where is your amen? amen? And subdue it. 
where is your amen? amen? And have dominion, where is your amen? amen? Over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon, upon the earth. That is your capacity. Dominion. Over the fowl of the air, over the fish of the sea, and over everything that creepeth on earth. In other words, fowls of the air. We are talking about Wapi? The air. We are talking about above. Over the fish of the sea. We are talking about beneath. And on earth. Where we are. Should you be living under anything over dominion? Should you? Say no. Your identity should be dominating everything. Everything that tries to come your way. Like defeat. Everything that tries to come your way like lack of success. That is what you should be dominating. Shout, I dominate. I, dominate. I, rule, I rule. Over the fowl of the air. Over the, the, over the fish of the sea. And over every crawling thing on earth. That is my portion. Number four, position. Ephesians chapter 2. Position. Who am I in connection to your purpose? And that is your position. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, 5 and 6. Very quickly, I'm remaining with the one, then we round up. 5 and 6, he says, Even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. Say amen. amen. I read it with NLT. That even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only the grace of God that has been saved. Verse 6 he says, with NLT, uh, okay, JV, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So where are you? Where are you seated? In heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So why are you not manifesting the prophets of Christ Jesus? Because you haven't discovered who you are. Say from today, I know who I am. Praise God. Number five is accomplishment. What are you able to accomplish? Who am I? In connection to purpose, what are you able to accomplish? This one is everyone's knowledge. We read from the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verses 13. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatsoever said I am. Is it? Philippians, no. Verse 1. Sorry. Philippians 4. 1 to 3. 1 to 3. Yes, 1 to 3. He says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Verse 2 says, I beseech our Enodias and beseech Aha that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true ye folks, help those are... Ah, no, 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 no. That is not the scripture I am looking for. Philippians. I'll get it for you by next Sunday. We'll be able to share it. 